Hey everyone, Adam Simmons here from DGTL Infra, short for Digital Infrastructure. Yet again, we have an example that the flood of private equity and infrastructure capital to fiber to the home initiatives is not slowing down. In this video, I'm going to give you a quick overview of the rationale for Searchlight Partners investing $425 million into consolidated communications how that capital will be used to fund a build-out of fiber to 1 million homes in northern New England, and how it all ties together financially for consolidated communications. You might actually be able to make some money by piggybacking on Searchlight's work because consolidated communications is still publicly traded, so stay tuned and I will break this all down for you. Before I do, be sure to subscribe to the DGTL Infra channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss my next in-depth video that is coming out soon. Now, let's jump into the video. Okay, so quick background on the two parties involved here. First, we have Consolidated Communications, which operates 46,000 fiber route miles serving three main customer groups, carriers, commercial, and consumer. The company's addressable market includes 2.8 million homes passed, and its network connects to 12,900 on-net buildings. Second, we have Searchlight Capital Partners, which is a global private equity firm with over $7 billion in assets under management that focuses on buyouts, growth equity, and recapitalizations with offices in New York, London, and Toronto. Okay, so now I will lay out for you the broad picture of the transaction and then we'll dive deeper into each of the sections to discuss them in more detail. So Consolidated Communications trades on the NASDAQ under the ticker CNSL, and it entered into an agreement with Searchlight Capital Partners, who will make a strategic investment of $425 million into the company, which is expected to close in mid-2021. Searchlight's investment provides a significant capital infusion which enables Consolidated to upgrade more than 1 million homes with fiber passings to consumer and small business customers, further expanding Consolidated's fiber network and accelerating its growth plans. Consolidated also announced a refinancing, which will result in an improved capital structure, providing the company with extended debt maturities, financial flexibility, and liquidity. Okay, so now let's discuss some of the details behind the strategic investment from Searchlight Capital Partners into Consolidated Communications. So Searchlight Capital Partners is a highly experienced broadband and digital infrastructure investor who has committed to a $425 million investment in Consolidated Communications. And we'll discuss the details of this investment in the following page. So upon closing of Searchlight's initial investment, Consolidated raised $2.25 billion in new secured debt, including a new revolving credit facility, and retired all $2 billion of its previously outstanding debt. Consolidated's new debt consists of a five-year, $250 million revolving credit facility and a seven-year, $1.25 billion term loan, with a maturity date in 2027 and it's priced at LIBOR plus 4.75%. Consolidated also raised $750 million of senior secured notes with a maturity date in 2028, which priced at 6.5% fixed. As a result of the refinancing, Consolidated reduced its net debt by $325 million and net leverage ratio from 4.1 times EBITDA to 3.5 times EBITDA pro forma for the proceeds of Searchlight's $425 million investment. Consolidated will have a $155 million pro forma cash balance, leaving the company well capitalized to accelerate its fiber deployment going forward. Additionally, in connection with Searchlight's investment in the company, Searchlight will receive two board seats on Consolidated's board of directors. So on October 2nd, Consolidated's Board of Directors appointed one new independent director, David Fuller, as part of closing Searchlight's initial investment. David Fuller is an advisor of Searchlight Capital Partners and brings significant experience in broadband infrastructure transformation. Fuller is currently the chair of the Board of Directors at Mattel Networks, 
and is also a member of the board of directors of Great West Life Co. Fuller is also a senior advisor to the Boston Consulting Group for the technology, media, and telecom practice globally. Following Searchlight's second investment closing, it will be entitled to appoint a second director to the consolidated board. In terms of advisors on this transaction, Morgan Stanley and Wells Fargo served as financial advisors to Consolidated Communications, and Schiff Hardin served as legal counsel to Consolidated. For Searchlight, J.P. Morgan served as lead financial advisor, with Goldman Sachs, Deutsche Bank, and TD Securities also providing financial advisory services to Searchlight, and Wachtell, Lipton, Rosen, and Katz served as legal counsel to Searchlight. Under the terms of the agreement between Searchlight and Consolidated Communications, Searchlight is committed to a $425 million investment, but it's not as straightforward and has many different pieces, so it is worth breaking it down into three different steps to help understand how the money is flowing. In Stage 1, Searchlight will invest $350 million and receive common stock representing an 8% ownership interest in Consolidated Communications. From the initial $350 million investment, Searchlight will receive an unsecured note with a principal amount of $395 million and be issued a contingent payment right, which is known as a CPR, convertible into common stock in Consolidated Communications. This represents an additional 17% ownership in the company for an aggregate of 25% ownership interest. Moving to Stage 2, upon receipt of the Federal Communications Commission and antitrust approvals, Searchlight will invest an additional $75 million and in return receive additional contingent payment rights, or CPRs, which are convertible into common stock in Consolidated Communications representing another 10% ownership interest, so now the total being a 35% ownership interest overall. Searchlight's $395 million unsecured note will be converted into perpetual preferred stock with a 9% coupon and with a payment in kind or pick option for five years. What this means is that Consolidated will not have to pay the interest on that preferred stock in cash and will rather have the interest that is accrued add to the balance of the preferred stock over the course of the five years. It's also worth noting that the $395 million preferred stock amount is derived by intending to mirror the economics of a $425 million preferred stock, which is Searchlight's total investment, with a coupon of 7.5% for the first five years. The difference between why Searchlight wanted to earn a 9% coupon versus the 7.5% coupon was primarily done for Searchlight's private equity tax management purposes, as the economic result is largely the same. Finally, moving to stage 3 of the transaction, following all applicable regulatory approvals, including Public Utility Commission, or PUC approval, as well as stockholder approval, Searchlight's Contingent Payment Rights, or CPRs, will convert to common equity. Post-conversion, Searchlight will hold an aggregate pro forma ownership interest in Consolidated Communications of 35%, in addition to the $395 million of perpetual preferred stock with a 9% coupon. So now that we're familiar with the investment structure and its details, Let's analyze how Consolidated Communications will use this capital to fund their future business growth endeavors. First, we'll start with a recap of Consolidated Communications. So Consolidated Communications is a top 10 United States fiber provider operating 46,000 fiber route miles and over 2 million fiber strand miles across 23 states. Consolidated serves three main customer groups, being carriers, commercial, and consumer. The company's addressable market includes 2.8 million homes passed, and its network connects to 12,900 on-net buildings. The majority of the markets Consolidated serves have only one wireline broadband competitor, 
and 11% of the markets that Consolidated is in have no existing competition. And if we think about who Consolidated's key competitors are, they include AT&T, Comcast, Mediacom, Armstrong, Suddenlink, and New Wave Communications. Consolidated Communications will use the capital and partnership with Searchlight to position the company as a leading fiber-to-the-home business and wholesale provider. Capital from Searchlight will enable Consolidated to significantly enhance its fiber infrastructure and accelerate investments in high-growth broadband areas of its business. Consolidated's accelerated build plan leverages its fiber network to significantly increase consumer speeds to 1 gigabit per second in more than 50% of its addressable market. In addition, Consolidated will leverage the fiber it is building for consumer initiatives to target select areas of opportunity for enterprise and carrier, also known as wholesale, business growth. In summary, Consolidated Communications' vision for the future is to become a larger fiber to the home provider in its existing markets. Continuing on with further details about Consolidated Communications' fiber to the home build plan, Consolidated's overall build plan, which is shown by the right side of this page, has an allocation of $2 billion in aggregate capital over an eight year period to support its fiber build, enabling the company to have 1.4 million fiber to the home passings an increase from 11% penetration currently to greater than 50% of its homes passed over the build period. However, Consolidated will be using the $425 million strategic investment from Searchlight Capital Partners to specifically accelerate its Northern New England Fiber Network build plan, which you can see in the middle of the page. So Consolidated's investment in Northern New England is a subset of its overall build plan, and it represents 30% of the company's total capital expenditures over that five-year period. So on Northern New England, over a five-year period, Consolidated will invest $450 million to upgrade 1 million homes with a fiber offering with speeds of 1 gigabit per second, at a highly efficient cost of less than $450 per passing. Specifically, Consolidated will make this investment in three northern New England markets, increasing its fiber passings from 6% currently to 64% across Maine, Vermont, and New Hampshire, where the company has a very dense fiber network already. So now let's compare one of the most important assumptions in fiber to the home build projects, which is the assumed cost to build per household passed. As you'll recall, Consolidated is assuming a $450 cost per household passed. This would be unprecedented for a rural or low density footprint, such as Consolidated's Northern New England footprint. Referencing the graph on the page, which is according to the Fiber Broadband Association and Fiber Technical Consultant Cartesian, urban areas typically experience costs to build fiber of a $700 to $1,500 cost per household passed, while rural areas typically range from a $3,000 to $6,000 cost per household passed, which is four times more expensive to build in rural environments than it is in urban, which is simply because more fiber needs to be built in rural environments to reach the same number of homes as it does in urban environments given the density of households. Additionally, using other benchmarks, Consolidated's competitors such as Altice validate these industry numbers that you see on the page, as these competitors struggle to achieve metrics any lower than a $600 cost per household pass to build fiber. Altice, for example, is overbuilding its entire optimum footprint at a $600 cost per household passed, but at the same time is benefiting from being in a high density market like the greater New York area and having over 80% of its fiber deployed aerially, so not underground, both of which are helping LTs to lower its fiber deployment costs. Even with these third party proof points that fiber build costs could be materially higher, Consolidated's management nonetheless remains confident and its uniquely low target of a $450 cost per household pass. 
Consolidated's management argues that build-out cost data from historical precedents is too old to be used as a comparable. Further, 81% of the near-net opportunity for Consolidated is in northern New England aerial fiber, meaning not built underground. Just as a note, near-net means that Consolidated has fiber passing nearby a home, which is on-net that physically has fiber connectivity built for it. Because Consolidated has the ability to hang fiber aerially, as compared to having to trench it underground, it avoids significant permitting and construction costs, both of which drive a significant portion of the fiber deployment cost reductions. And finally, much of Consolidated's regional fiber build-out over the past two years will be leveraged for near-net residential deployment, with the company owning 18,000 fiber miles in a compact northern New England geography. So now let's try to frame out what the northern New England fiber to the home build project means financially for consolidated communications. Recall that the company provided key assumptions like a target to achieve 1 million households passed over a five year period and a build cost per household passed of about $450. We'll layer on a few additional assumptions not provided by the company in order to get to a return on invested capital, or ROIC, at the end of that five year build period. So, on this page, we have the illustrative returns of the fiber to the home build project in northern New England for Consolidated. It's assumed that Consolidated can achieve its 1 million households passed over five years, assuming 200,000 households passed are added each year. Penetration of 10% is achieved in year one, equating to 20,000 subscribers that are added over the course of the year, and an average subscriber base of 10,000 over the course of the year. Penetration is assumed to grow by 2.5% each year to reach 20% penetration by year five. Additionally, subscriber churn of 1% of average subscribers is assumed from year two onwards. In terms of the rate charged, Average revenue per user, or ARPU, on a monthly basis is assumed to be $60 in year one and grows by 2.5% each year thereafter. Revenue is calculated on the average number of subscribers during the same period. Operating costs are assumed to be 35% of revenues, resulting in a gross profit margin of 65%. Moving to costs that are used to acquire subscribers, or are more one-time in nature, the cost per gross addition is assumed to be $400, which is comprised of customer premise equipment and installation costs, and also marketing costs to get those customers. The build cost per household passed is assumed to be the $450 number, which Consolidated has disclosed it is underwriting for Northern New England. So based upon all of those assumptions, Consolidated will achieve a return on invested capital in year one of 5%, which is circled in red, which grows by 3 to 4% annually to reach 19.5% by year five, also circled in red. This is an attractive investment profile for Consolidated, should the above assumptions prove correct. And just as a side note, the return on invested capital, or ROIC, is calculated taking gross profit divided by cumulative build costs. So how can Consolidated achieve even higher returns on invested capital? So first, penetration in year five could be higher than the 20% shown and can potentially be as high as 50%. Pricing power is also another one where the average revenue per user or ARPU could exceed $60, coupled with a faster ARPU growth rate than the 2.5% currently shown. Gross margins for fiber to the home typically range between 60% to 75%, and therefore Consolidated could achieve higher margins than the 65% currently assumed, but with an upper bound likely at the 75% range. And why are these potential upside opportunities possible? Well, from a competitive standpoint, the market is set up for Consolidated to potentially achieve some of these upsides to the illustrative business plan shown, because as an example, 10 to 11% of Consolidated's Northern New England footprint does not have a broadband provider yet. Further, the remainder of that Northern New England network does have a competitor, 
which is largely the cable companies like Comcast and Charter, but a cost-efficient, dedicated 1 gigabit per second fiber to the home build could enable Consolidated to offer a compelling value proposition compared to some of those competitors and thus take share. And finally, Consolidated also has the opportunity to leverage its fiber build for other purposes, such as selling network capacity to carriers, which is known as wholesale revenue. It's also important to frame out the risks to the illustrative returns presented. Consolidated's $450 cost per household passed is unproven, and thus a major challenge, particularly for a rural or low density footprint, such as Consolidated's northern New England footprint. Consolidated's realized build costs could well exceed its underwritten $450 cost per household pass. So that wraps up this video discussing how Consolidated secured a strategic investment from Searchlight Capital. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, then please share it with somebody you think may also find it helpful. And consider subscribing to DGTL Infra and visit us at dgtlinfra.com for more of the latest news on digital infrastructure. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like the video and post in the comments telling me whether you think Searchlight Capital Partners made a good choice investing in Consolidated Communications and its Northern New England Fiber to the Home Build project. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.